our last question before we end of our session is question 1.2. I'm going to keep this here. I looked through a lot of past papers when I prepared this lesson and I have seen this question in almost four or five papers. Let's look at this question. Remember now, Clyde is going to take out 200,000 Rand. He's going to make 48 equal payments and his payment every time will have to be 5096,96. But listen very carefully. He can go to the bank and he can tell them after a certain time, you know what, I want to know what the balance on my loan is. How much do I still owe you? Because maybe you got some money from a relative and the relative says, Clyde, don't worry, don't worry, go pay everything at once. So he wants to settle his loan. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He doesn't want to continue paying 48 equal payments. He wants to maybe settle his loan before the time. Or he just wants to go to the bank and ask, how much must I still pay? What is the balance on my loan. So look at 1.2. Guys, I've seen this in a lot of papers and I want you to get it right if you see it again. In 1.2 it says, calculate the outstanding balance, calculate the outstanding balance immediately after his 16th payment has been made. When you see outstanding balance, you again use your present value formula, x, open bracket, 1 minus 1 plus i to the power of negative n over i. Now remember everybody, he wants to know what, listen, calculate the outstanding balance. So you are looking for p. So Clyde is paying 5096,96 every month. And after his 16th payment, he wants to know how much does he still owe. Remember now, you are looking for P because you want to know how much he owes. That 5096 goes into the place of X. And here comes the most important thing you have to remember. What are you going to put into the place of N? Please, everybody, just look. He had 48 payments. Right? He had 48 payments before this loan would have been settled, but he made 16. So how many months would he have left? It's 48 minus 16. It's 32 months. Do you understand that? 32 payments you put into the place of N. So it's going to be, I'm going to put the interest rate in now, I first want to understand if you get this 32 payments. A lot of teachers teach this using a future value and present value at the same time or a compound interest formula. Teachers and students, if you want to see what the balance on your loan is, take the number of months and just subtract the months that you have paid already. So he would have made 48 payments. But he wanted to know after 16 payments, how much does he still owe? So it's 48 minus 16, which is 32. And you merely take that 32 because that is the amount of payments you would have had left. And you substitute it into your formula. So can we substitute this into our formula quickly? 5096, comma 96, 1 minus. Remember, our interest rate is still the same. Do you agree with me? It is 10, comma to five percent ten comma to five percent how is it compounded everybody it is compounded monthly fantastic what do i put into the place of n think with me he had 48 he paid 16 there's 32 payments left divided by remember your interest rate remains exactly the same and you put that into your calculator I want everybody to put that, that into their calculators quickly and you SMS your answers through to me. I hope you all understand the 32. He had 48 payments, 16 he made, so there's 32 payments left. I want everybody to put that into their calculators and to see what they get. 
All right, it's quite a long calculation, so you use your fraction button on your calculator. 96.56, that's correct. And you go. I'm waiting for your answers, guys. Everybody on the calculators. I'm getting some fantastic answers here. Some of you are out by a few cents. Maybe you are rounding off too much in your sum. I have Nikita who says 142. 184 and 12 cents and Dale also 142 184 and 12 cents Tina just check your answers you are bit out by a few rands and everybody I want some more answers coming through and the answer to the sum is indeed 142184 and 12 cents he still owes 1442 1,184 and 12 cents on his loan after he's made 16 payments. Everybody, you have to punch this into your calculator nicely. If you see this bracket, you punch it in. If you see this bracket, you punch it in. Remember, this is negative 32. Negative 32. I'm getting more people sending in that answer. I know it takes quite some time to punch this into your calculator. And that is fantastic, Claudia Erasmus from Paulus Uber Secondary School. That is beautiful. I have Amanda from Clutusville High School who also SMSed the correct answer. All right. Everybody, that marks the end, almost the end of our lesson. Remember quickly, compound interest is a once-off payment. Simple interest, once-off. Future value, I'm saving for the future. Then you use the F formula on your, on your formula sheet. What is the difference between present and future? Think with me. Present, I need to, need to make a loan. I need the money now. Future value, I'm saving for the future. That's the difference between future and present value. I hope that this lesson of this afternoon has helped you. I've seen such a lot of students who says that they do understand. Just quickly, the final answer there was 5096,5656 there. Don't worry, it's just a few cents. And then I want to wish you well for your prelim exams. I want to say that it's almost three weeks, just three weeks, and you're writing these prelims exams. Everything of the best. Study hard, no partying now, sitting with your books every evening, every day, as much as you possibly can. Download lots of papers from the internet if you want to and if you have the facilities available. And everybody remember financial mathematics is not an easy um, question in the paper, but I hope that this afternoon's lesson has helped. Thank you everybody for tuning in and for helping me with my answers and working through the sums with me. Have a great, great afternoon. Bye-bye.